everyone. We are on sustainable growth today, and I am on with Jeff Heggie. I have known him for, I don't know, three, four, five years. I don't even know anymore. That's what happens when you have connections with people and time flies, and it's just like, hey, oh, yeah, that's Jeff. <laughs> you know, just one of those things. So, but, <laughs> you know, we, when we met, we just, I guess, kicked it off and just been connected ever since. And today we're going to talk about a book that he has co authored with uh, Tammy Matheny. And uh, we're going to get into some of the chapters in the book. And I've highlighted a few. I don't want to give too much away because you need to purchase the book to really get into it. Um, but hopefully I highlight enough that will interest you. So even though I know Jeff, I know you probably don't know Jeff. So I'm going to read actually some of his bio from the book so you can have an idea who he is and why you really should be connected. So Jeff Heggie is an entrepreneur, author, and success coach with a commitment to help individuals in achieving their biggest goals. Specializing in optimizing performance for entrepreneurs and athletes, Jeff leverages a unique mindset-first approach. His methodologies are deeply rooted in the belief that the journey to success and breaking through barriers, both mental and physical, starts with cultivating the right mindset. With many unique entrepreneur ventures and banking industry experience, in combination with his consulting and coaching, Jeff's insights are both effective and practical. His coaching style is further enriched by his extensive experience and training in the field, enabling him to guide clients through complex challenges. And he does hold you accountable. I can testify to that. <laughs> his diverse athletic background includes uh, including his experience as a professional rodeo cowboy and his involvement in various sports like hockey, boxing, football, among others, complements his over 20 years of coaching basketball. His broad spectrum of athletic involvement provides him with a unique, multifaceted perspective in his coaching practice. His wide-ranging experience in both individual and team sports make him a highly relatable and effective mentor and leader, enriching his guidance in both entrepreneur and athletic realms. Well, Jeff, this is not even a drop into some of the stuff that you do, but it gives a highlight. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thanks for coming on and wanting to talk about Challenger Deep. Yeah, thank, thanks, Melissa. It was actually when you were doing the introduction and said you were going to say how long we've known each other. I was like, I've got to listen to this because I don't know that answer. It's been a number of years, yeah. but that are like three, been... four, five. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And you know what, Tammy and I were talking about this a little while ago because you know Tammy and I do a lot of things together. We've written the book mm -hmm. together. We run the Confident Athlete Program together. We've never met each other in person. And you and I, we've known each other for so long and we talk regularly. We do okay. so much together. We've never met each other in person. We got to make these things happen. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, Melissa. Appreciate the opportunity to be on here with you today and talk about these things and just look for opportunities to hold you accountable for something. Oh, wow. See, like I said, <laughs> he will hold you accountable. He has this, this this notebook that he has. And every time I see him pull it, I'm like, did I really say, am I going to be committed to this? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, he will hold you accountable. So when the idea of this book came up um, and you start having the conversations of, yeah, let's write this book. This is what we want, you know, to include in it. What was that thought to say, let's do it? And then the title, Challenger Deep, Athletes Rising Above Adversity. Sure. So first of all, I'll explain a little bit behind the title because um, it, it actually means a lot. So Challenger Deep is actually the deepest part of the ocean. It's literally the lowest spot on earth. You can't get any lower. So there's nowhere to go but up. And that really ties into a lot of the things we talk about in the book. And Tammy actually wrote a first version of Challenger Deep 
with with another friend of hers, Lindsay, that they wrote this book of stories and fables of overcoming challenges. And it was Tammy that came to me and because we were running the Confident Athlete program together, working with a lot of athletes in different um, sports. And she says, you know, what? I'd really like to write a second edition to Challenger Deep, but more of an athletic version for the for athlete athletes and sharing athletic stories and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Would you would you would you write it with me? And of course, right away, I, I didn't even hesitate. Of course, I was honored to have her ask me. And, you know, you and I had talked a lot about writing books and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so this was an opportunity to really jump into one and have an accountability partner to get it done. And so when Tammy speared that off, um, that that's how it all came together. And it is a book of stories of athletes who have faced their own adversity because really when I think about adversity, we all face adversity of some sort or another, but it's how we choose to respond to that adversity that really determines who we become. And we can face adversity and let it beat us and we just stay level or even take a step back or we can rise above it and become better because of it and have a really a growth mindset and become better at everything in life, in our sport, in our endeavors, whatever we're doing because of that adversity and that learning experience. And this is a book of stories of real life athletes, um, a lot of really common names, a lot of athletes that Tammy and I personally know or have interviewed that have faced different adversities. And because of those adversities, they've risen above and become better because of it. Okay. So that goes into the titles of each chapter. As I was looking, you know, based on what you just said, it makes sense on why you selected um, a lot of the titles that you did for each one of these chapters. And they're not long chapters, but the titles was just, you know, it's, you know, sticking out with certain things. So the first one that caught my attention was the power of support. Um, Even though that, you know, you're relating it back to athletes, sports, and all these different things, it also applies to entrepreneurs and even someone in a professional career. Um, what would you say is the most important thing about having support regardless of where you are? You know, it's, it's such an important part. In fact, I just barely had a conversation about this is you look at confidence, having a self-belief in yourself is such a powerful thing to build your confidence. But when someone else believes in you, it takes your confidence to a whole nother level. You know, um, Bill Self, who is the Kansas basketball coach, I'm not going to quote him exactly, but he said something to the fact that he says, I believe in my players so much that I can hold them accountable for what I believe they can achieve. And when we know we've got the support of someone, when we've got someone that really believes in us, it really gives us the ability to hold ourselves accountable. Like, hey, you know what? I know Melissa believes I can do these things. I'm going to make sure that I prove her right. And so that support can help help us get through some really tough times. It can help us get through adversity. Um, it can really help us do a lot of different things. So I, and like you said, it's not just athletics. It's mm-hmm. everyday life. It's entrepreneurship. It's parenting. It's everything we do. You're right. I mean, it's it's. We look at support and sometimes it seems like it's so little, but sometimes that little small piece of support makes a huge difference in somebody's daily life or something you're going through or just that extra push that you need to have to move forward. Right. Absolutely. So your next one is go for it. And that could be so broad on so many different levels. But, you know, my thought as I was looking at it was like, you know, we all have these dreams. And again, it goes back to whether you want to be some type of athlete, professional athlete, um, uh, building a business or learning how to skate, knit, whatever it is. Um, it's like, just go for it and just do it. What uh, is one of the things <clears throat> that you would say where so many people have, you know, that issue because you're yourself, you're a coach, you talk to people all the time that they have this issue of like, just, you know what? Let's just throw it all out there and just do it. 
Yeah, you know what? That that's actually one of my favorite stories in the book, um, because well, you have to read a bit. Erin Matson is just amazing at what she's accomplished. But there's so many times we have our own limiting beliefs and we put all these restrictions on ourselves. I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough experience what it is. But if we can get past those limiting beliefs, those limits that we're putting on ourselves, it really opens up a huge world of what we're capable of. And that's exactly what this book is for. We want you to look at stories like Aaron Matson and say, you know what, if she didn't have that self-belief to actually step out of her comfort zone and do what she did, she wouldn't have accomplished all these things. So if she can do that, why can't I? If she can do what she did, why can't I just take that one step that is going to help me achieve those goals? And, you know, anything that we want to achieve that's worthwhile is going to require stepping out of our comfort zone to some degree, taking some risks. And really, that's where we find the rewards. And it's like as we're talking, it's, it's steady leading and leading to the next thing that I want to talk about, because what you just said, it also is how we need to train our mind for those type of things and just going forward and getting up and doing those different things. And as a athlete coach is you got to train your body. You go through all these different phases of when you first start and you eventually build up to be at a certain point. And, you know, every day you got to do these certain things to make sure. And then once you're done is doing whatever regimen it is to relax the muscles, you know, to cool your body down, all these different things from being an athlete to, you know, being a business owner or again, whatever you want to be, how is that training your mind and getting in that right mindset to pretty much get in the gym? It's just, you know, you have your mind, but it's like getting in the gym and just doing the training. Yeah. I mean, really one of the things we talk in one of the stories about is preparation. <laughs> and I, I think that's such an important part of confidence because you know, we can think of anything we've done that if you try to do it and you're not prepared, you haven't done the things necessary to be prepared, mm -hmm. you don't have confidence in what you're doing. But when you put in the work, when you do the things that are going to help prepare you, you can be at a high, such a higher level of confidence. If you're, Melissa, if you were asked, well, you're, you're a little different. If you were asked to go speak in front of a crowd right now, you, you could do it off the, <laughs> off the hip. But mo most people... Yeah if they were asked at the spur of a moment mm -hmm. i need you to speak in front of these five thousand people if they hadn't prepared themselves they couldn't do it and do it with confidence but if you put in the preparation you put in the work then your performance is so much better and that goes with athletics that goes with everything we do in life and so i think preparation is a huge part of building your confidence and it, to, to, you know, hook onto that a little bit is even though that we're prepared, you still get those butterflies, you still get nervous. So, you know, when we're talking about, you know, pushing through, getting your mindset and preparing for these different things, uh, it's not like, oh, I'm ready to go. We're going to jump on stage and talk about, you know, whatever. It's, it's, and I think that's a normal process of having those butterflies and being nervous. So what are your thoughts on that, Jeff? Yeah, I think you're right. And I think that does a lot of that comes down to your own mindset and and your own beliefs. You know, I heard Tony, Ro Tony Robbins tell a story once and he talked about, I can't remember who it was, but someone that he was working with. And they just said, you know, when I get ready to go on stage and perform, my hands get sweaty, my heart rate goes up, I get mm -hmm. my face gets hot and I'm just ready to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And then he was working with Bruce Springsteen and he says, you know what? I'm ready to go on stage. My hands get sweaty. My heart rate goes up and I know I'm ready. I'm excited. And so it's like, what do we take those cues from when we get that anxiety or mm -hmm. whatever it is? Is it really, is it anxiety or is it excitement? Because we can choose. 
mm -hmm. on how we're going to how we're going to respond to that. And I think when you have the right mindset and being prepared can be a big part of that. If if you're getting ready to go on stage and you're not prepared, it is going to be a lot more anxiety than excitement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are prepared, you mm -hmm. might have the exact same feelings, but how you interpret it could be different. Mm. That's good. And you know, I just want to say, even though we're rolling, these chapters are not back to back. There's some I've skipped a lot of things in between because I know it seems like this flowing. So, you know, when you get the book, I don't want you to have the impression like, oh, they're going chapter to chapter. We're actually not. And from the last thing we just talked about training your mind, it's quite a few, you know, quite a bit in here that I've skipped the way um, as we go to the next step, that's actually the next thing that I've highlighted was preparation. And one of the things I highlighted in this chapter is preparation is essential, not optional. Being prepared gives you a competitive advantage. Before we really get into that, Let's talk about what is preparation. You know, and, and this is one of my favorite stories because it's a story about a good friend of mine, Tyson Durfee, who is a world champion uh, cowboy. Mm -hmm. And preparation to me is doing the things necessary to be able to perform at the level that you desire. And, you know, when I talked to him about this, I loved his stories that he shared with me because you know, he, he talked about when he was younger, he had these goals, these big goals of what he wanted to achieve. He wanted to be a world champion. And what he did to do, to do that is he made a lot of sacrifices. When he was young, when he was in high school, he was putting himself, he was working um, to make sure he was going to be able to get himself down the road to all the rodeos. But the practice, he was getting up every morning at five o'clock to practice. He was practicing late into the night and doing all these things. And the part that I loved, he says, you know, when I got to a rodeo ready to compete, I knew I had put in the preparation. I knew I had done everything I needed to do to perform my best. And I knew that most of the people I was competing with didn't prepare the same way I had prepared. And so I mm -hmm. felt like I deserved it. I felt like I had done what I needed to do that I should deserve, I probably deserved it more than anyone else there. That doesn't mean he'd go win every rodeo, but he could go out and perform knowing that he had the confidence in himself because he had done the things necessary to prepare. So I think preparation, whatever it is, what, you know, we talked about preparing for a, speaking in front of 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. Have you put in the, have you put in the work to know what you're going to say? Have you, have Tyson put in the work that when he's there at the rodeo, he can perform his best. You know, I, I talk a lot with the athletes in the confident athlete program about this is you can go to all your practices and be a good team. But if you want to be a great athlete, there's a lot more that you've got to do on your own and not just, you know, when I talk to the, my basketball players, if you're practicing on your own, it's not just going and getting at shots. That's great. But if you really want to be the best, you've got to be very intentional about your preparation. You know, exactly what are you working on? What is the goal and the outcome of this workout? And coming to the team practices, are you just going through the motions or are you practicing with a purpose? And I think that's where preparation really can separate people from mm. being the best. The power of touch. Explain that and why you decided to put that in this book. You know, that that's a story. And, you know, there's actually a story about the Golden State Warriors that I read once that I shared with one of my basketball teams and I could not find it again. But this is a story that related back to Steve Nash um, when he was playing for the Phoenix Suns. And it goes back. There's a lot of studies that go into this that by having you know, the power of touch, what we're talking about is giving high fives and even verbal touch, you know, those sort of things. It can create a positive energy for the team and the energy is contagious. And I don't remember all the numbers, but they, the study talked about how many times they touched on average during a game. And 
that support just created such a team atmosphere. And, you know, it's something that I really believe, you know, when I first started hearing about this, I encouraged my team to do it more. And I just think it builds trust within teammates. The more they touch, the more they talk, those sort of things. There's really a lot of benefit in that, I believe. It is. And I think that's why so many now are trying to get back to in-person talking and not so much text messaging and pictures and things like that. And social media is, hey, let's actually meet up. And even like prime example, we're in completely different states and it could still be a Zoom call or something just to have that face-to-face -face interaction and not just always texting in social media. Um, and I think with that, it's a shift in that. And it's, it's a difference from the conversations and the, like I said, the energy and the things that can happen within those conversations, just having that interaction and just actually talking to each other um, makes a big difference as well. Yeah. And you know what? Um, one of the things we do after every chapter is we have a section called moving forward and we talk about things to consider <laughs> Th yep. things you can implement and how to expand on it. And I think in that one, one of the things that we talk about is, you know, you look at yourself because you see different dynamics on teams mm -hmm. and you might see a team where, you know, on the floor, they might be picking at each other or different, doing different things. Mm -hmm. But I think in the section where we talk about consider, it's like when you are seeing a team that is touching is huddling a lot they're talking a lot they've got good communication they've got good mm -hmm. body language with each other how does that make you feel as an opponent and you know you can look at that and realize that you know we need to implement those same things mm -hmm. well in that in that one you do have like tnt talk and touch so it's you know putting that in there uh, pretty much exactly what you just said and that was my next thing is about, you know, putting this at the end of every chapter. <laughs> it's like you're hitting on <laughs> exactly where I'm going. I'm like, OK, <laughs> that was my exact I mean, exactly where I'm going. And with behind each uh, chapter is this three column table, consider, implement and expand. And they put a little verbiage in each one of those. What was the. Um, thought process behind this to say, you know what, let's do this. And I also noticed that there's QR codes in some of them to where they could scan it and watch videos. Yeah. So the idea here is because we want everyone to use it. I mean, it's great to read a motivational or inspirational story, but if that's all you do is read it and go on to the next story, mm -hmm. how much are you really going to get from it? And so we wanted to do something where people could read it and really take something from it and implement it in what they're doing. Because we have a lot of coaches that get their teams using this. Um, and for example, we've got a golf team that each each of the golfers had a copy of the book and they would share, you know, what they learned from different stories, how they would implement it and stuff like that. And so we want them to be able to look at it and whether they're doing it individually or as a team, or maybe it's a, just a coach reading it, they can say, okay, that story is something that really could impact my team. How can I implement these things? Or how do I take it and put this into practice? And so that's where that all came about. And actually the whole QR code thing, we we wanted to be able to have them expand more on it and be able to use so, some mm -hmm. things. And we had, a, I would say a mentor of ours that really started using QR codes a lot lately. and. Uh, she influenced us and that, that would be Melissa Ambers. And so <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the one, I'm glad you're the one that contribute. got me using QR codes. <laughs> I'm glad I could contribute. <laughs> no, it, it really was. You, you started using QR codes over the last year and mm -hmm. a half, I think it is. And um, I know, you know, you have used it in your books and that, that was why we did it. And so something else that we've done, even if you don't have the book, obviously we want you to get the book. That's where you're going to get the most out of it. But these resources we want to share with whoever. And so even without the book, you can go to confidentathleteprogram.com slash challenger deep and all of the resources that are at 
the end of every chapter are available at that website as well. Okay. The last thing we're going to talk about in this book, and this has a QR code as well, is the monthly confidence calendar. What is the confidence calendar and why is it important? You know what, that's something actually Tammy has been doing for a while now. And she put that together as something, you know, you can look at these things, just like, you know, you and I have talked a lot about creating calendars or whatever it might be for, um, you know, your social media um, posts or whatever it is. The, co the confidence calendar is something that you can just look at every day and we've got something on there that, okay, today I'm going to focus on this one thing. Maybe it's preparation. How can I focus on preparation today? And it's just these little things that you can implement every single day that are going to help you build your confidence. And Tammy comes out with a new one every single month. Um, you, you can, if you go to the link or the QR code that's there, you'll be added to our mailing list. And so every month, right before the first of the month, you'll get one of these confidence calendars. And it's just a little daily reminder or task of something you can do to help build your confidence every single day. Nice. Thank you so much, Jeff, for talking about this book and pretty much just knowing what I was going to talk about this whole interview. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what is one of the things you want to leave off with on the benefit of this book and why anyone should buy this book, whether you're an athlete, entrepreneur, or in a professional career? You know, I, um, it goes back to what I said at the beginning, you know, we all face adversity and it's how we respond to that adversity that helps us determine who we become. Um, you know, we're all going to become someone, we all become our future self. And if we want that future self to be the one, the best version of ourselves, mm -hmm. we've got to know how to, how to deal with adversity when we're faced with it, because it can really be something that blocks us or it can launch us to another level. And that's what I want people to be able to take from this book is the motivation, inspiration of using real life stories to help them when they face their adversity. Because you know what, I might face an adversity that you might look at as like, you know, why is he so stressed about that? Mm -hmm. But to me, it's the biggest thing in the world right now. And, you know, in a year, I might look back on it and think, oh, that wasn't so big. But at that moment, it is. And it's just like, you know, we teach a lot about visualization. And so many people teach that you only visualize positive, you know, the positive mental attitude, you've got to visualize the positive, which there's a lot of truth in that. But what happens when you face the negative? If you haven't visualized how you will respond to that, mm -hmm. then you're just reacting. But if you can visualize through these stories, hey, when this happens, you know, the, the story of Michael Phelps, he's, he's in the Olympics, his goggles fill up with water. The reason he was still able to win that race at the end, he says, they said, how did you respond to it? He says, just like I had imagined. He had already gone through that scenario in his mind. He says, okay, if, if my goggles fall off, if they fill up with water, what am I going to do? He already knew what he was going to do. So we don't want you to, you know, put all your attention and focus on what are all the negatives? What if every time I go up down the court, the ref makes a bad call? You don't want to put all your focus there, but you do want to know how you'll respond. And so by using these stories, it might be a situation where all of a sudden you're faced with adversity and you think back. Ah, oh, remember about that story in Challenger Deep. Remember how Michael Jordan did this. Maybe that's what I, how I need to respond to it. And so that's what I want people to be able to do, is be able to respond to their adversity better because they've experienced this book. Great. So where can they purchase the book and how can they reach out to you? Yes, um, the book's available on Amazon. If you go to the resource page at confidentathleteprogram.com slash challenger deep, there is a link there. Um, and for myself, my website's jeffhagey.com. Um, my I'm most active on Instagram, which is Jeff Hagey Coaching. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks, Melissa. I appreciate it. And you know what? Going back to the beginning, too, we talked about how long we've known each other. I think it says a lot when we can 
start and end each other's sentences and know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> That's crazy because as I'm, I'm looking at my notes and I'm preparing for the next question, you, I'm like, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? <laughs> it's crazy, but yeah, you, you're right. So that says something, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for joining us on Savvy, the business podcast. If you want to be a guest, send an email to media at SavvyMag.biz. That's media at S-A-V-V-Y-M-A-G dot B-I-Z. Don't miss out on the opportunity to be heard by millions.